Muy buenos días, hermanos y hermanas. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is great to be here with you today. I feel blessed by you. And I bring the greetings from the Salvadorian Lutheran Church, and especially from our beloved Bishop Gomez. I want you to know that we always are praying for you as a companion synod, the Sierra Pacific Synod, as a family in Christ. But I also want to tell you how grateful we are for your company in our mission and ministry in El Salvador. It is great to see that little by little, our sinners are getting closer in communion and in fellowship. My brothers and sisters, Jesus is present. He doesn't hide and show us his love through his word with the intention to walk by our side. The community text is a sample of John the Baptist humility, of simplicity, of heart and love of the people who were looking for a leader with a prophetic voice. What did John's declaration mean? The lamb died for the sins of the people, but his death was only effective because Jesus was the perfect lamb of God. Every lamb, every other lamb, as beautiful as it was on the outside, was still part of the sinful world. And this lamb John was, John was talking about was alive and moved among the people. Jesus has been by, baptized by John, and now John is testifying, telling that the Holy Spirit has descended in this person. It is very important to John to testify and recognize in Jesus. He got the experience meeting Jesus, and now he wanted to share it with the people. This story is inviting us to consider Jesus as the center of our life, but also as the one who looks for us and invites us to participate in his life project. Jesus comes as the one who gives his life and sacrifice for the sinners of the world. John is interested in people who hear and see realize that there is a supernatural evidence that, that makes the Messiah known. John knows perfectly well that all those people live a religion separated from, from God, so separated that they did not recognize the Son of God. He was among them, and they did not recognize him. God sent his only Son to, the peop to his people, but the people did not receive him. As Isaiah says, surely he took up our pain and bore our sufferings, but we all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. John wants all of us to get to recognize the Messiah. Look the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is an invitation to meet Jesus, to recognize him, and also to continue testifying. We cannot remain silent. The church can't remain sil silent. The commitment of every Christian is to introduce to the master of love to the world. In my community, in El Salvador, I have a children's ministry. In a, it's a group of about 30 children. 
which we have Bible studies, and we also have games to teach about the master of love. One day, one question arose, who is Jesus? As you can imagine, there were many responses. Some of them were also funny. Giancarlo, a seven years old boy, say, Pastor Christian, Jesus is someone who looks for us every day. He wants to know us and for us to know him. But adults don't allow us to know him. I was surprised by his answer and asked him, why do you think so? He said, adults are not interested anymore in God's things. They are busy working in the cornfields all the time. They are tired when they come home. They just want to check their phones. They are pretty busy, he told me. Another boy did another question. Pastor Christian, why are the women more interested in God things? I asked him, why do you think so? And he answered, they have more relation with God because they have more hope. And maybe his idea comes to the people in El Salvador who must attend the services in the church are women. What kind of relationship we have with God? The reading of today invites us all here to be careful, not to be religious, but to have a close, sincere, transparent, and honest relationship with God. The religious goes to church just because it is Sunday, worry about the com complaint with the schedules, but not with the commandment commitments, worry that their transmission or live streams are perfect, following general guidelines of organization and worship, but they do not transmit the true essence of being the church of God, the passion of the God of, of the Word of God in the New Testament, of being the church of Jesus Christ. We want to see sometimes the pastor, our friend. That's important too. But look and see, there is the Lamb of God who takes the sin of the world. And this Lamb of God invites us, open his arms to us so that we get to know him and so that we, that we make him know to the world. He invites us to listen to his prophetic voice and to follow in his footstep, come and see. What are we offering to the world as Christians? What does the world see in the follower of Christ? In what way do we give true witness to being Christians? The Lamb of God has a message that cannot be seen as an ancient a good, it should not be considered as something secondary, much less be destroyed by disunities, because that could cause the message to be misinterpreted and distorted by non-church members. And this will dilute the mission of the church, and this is what the devil likes. That's why we have to look and see very carefully. Come and see, says the Lamb of God. The call is to listen, see and announce, because he is the light, he is the true, he is the life. In him we find the medicine for our ills. In him we find comfort in the face of suffering and despair. We have this, he had the strength to carry all our sins on himself, all of them. Many times, we, when we look at our con conscience, we find it in it sins that are great, but he carries them. He came for this, to forgive, to bring peace to the world, bring peace to our heart, he brought us 
salvation. Perhaps each one of us has a torment in its heart. Perhaps we have darkness in our heart. Perhaps we feel a little sad because, because of guilt. He came to take away all this. He gave uh, us peace. He gave us forgiveness. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He takes this, away the sin, root and all. This is the salvation of Jesus with his love and his meekness. And listening to what John the Baptist said, who bears witness to Jesus as Savior, we must grow in trust in Jesus. We seek forgiveness and beauty, and we can find it just in him. Look to him. Spend time with him. And you will know all the more the beauty that he gives to you. So look at Christ. Look at the Lamb of God who is perfect sacrifice for our sins. He is your hope, our hope. He makes he has made us free, taking upon himself the guilt of humanity just for love. When John the Baptist say, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, he wasn't just getting the attention of those nearby. He was telling to everyone, including you and me today, to look. Look and see the Lamb of who saves you. Don't casually glance over. Don't use only your peripheral vision. I'm sorry for my English. It's not the best one. <laughs> look at him. Look. Look at him with all urgency and allow him enter in your life and heal your broken heart. Look at him who takes away your sins. Isn't that amazing? Amen.